What does it truly mean to call upon the name of the Lord in times of need? How can we hold on to God's promises when life's challenges seem overwhelming? Today, we will meditate on the living Word of God, exploring the treasures of Psalm 20. Together, we will discover how this psalm teaches us about divine protection, hope, and the blessings that come from a relationship with God. I am also going to pray a powerful prayer with you in the mighty name of Jesus. So watch until the end and open your hearts to receive the blessings of this prayer. My dear friends, the beauty of God's Word lies in its timelessness and relevance to our lives. The Bible tells us in Psalm 119 verse 105 that God's word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. In a world filled with uncertainties, we often find ourselves searching for hope, for guidance, and for reassurance. Let us look at what the Holy Spirit is saying to us through Psalm 20, a profound chapter that serves as a wellspring of wisdom and comfort. We will explore this magnificent psalm, verse by verse, to grasp the everlasting truths that God wants us to uncover. The opening verse of Psalm 20 is a powerful reminder that God is our defender. Verse 1 says, May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. We live in a world filled with troubles and challenges. It's easy to feel overwhelmed. Remember the situation where the walls of Jericho stood as an impenetrable barrier for the Israelites. They might have felt disheartened, but Joshua 6 verse 2 tells us of God's assurance. It says, See, I have given Jericho into your hand. With faith and obedience, they witnessed the walls crumble. Similarly, in the face of our challenges, God's promises can be our beacon of hope. When it says in this verse, May the Lord answer you, it implies that a prayer has been made. Friends, never underestimate the power of prayer. James 5 verse 16 says, The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. The verse also mentions the name of the God of Jacob. Why did it not just say God? Remember that Jacob was a man who wrestled with God and was changed by that experience. His name was changed to Israel, which means he who struggles with God. The God of Jacob is a God who allows room for our questions, struggles, and even our doubts. God's defense is not merely a shield, but a transformative experience that empowers us. Ephesians 6 speaks about the armor of God, not just as protective gear, but as qualities we embrace to face life's challenges victoriously. Then we have Psalm 20, verse 2, which tells us, May he send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. The sanctuary is not just a physical space, but a representation of God's presence. In the time of Moses, the tabernacle was the sanctuary where God's presence dwelt. It was there that offerings and sacrifices were made and divine help sought. Friends, God's sanctuary is accessible to you wherever you may be. Matthew 18 verse 20 assures us that where two or three are gathered in his name, he is in the midst of them. The psalm also speaks of Zion, which often represents the dwelling place of God in scriptures. It signifies not just a place, but the people of God as well. So when the psalmist prays for strength to come out of Zion, he is praying for the divine strength that comes from being in close relationship with God and his people. If we look at the story of Jehoshaphat in 2 Chronicles 20, we see an example of how help comes from the sanctuary. Jehoshaphat proclaimed a fast and sought the Lord's guidance, 
God answered by setting ambushes against their enemies. They didn't even have to fight. The sanctuary is also a place of transformation. Just like the water turned into wine at the wedding at Cana in John 2, so can our weaknesses be turned into strengths in God's presence. The use of the word strengthen here can also imply sustenance. We can lean into the unlimited provisions that God offers us. Isaiah 40 verse 31 promises that those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Let us also remember that God strengthens us not just for our benefit, but for a purpose. The story of Gideon in Judges 6 shows how God strengthened a timid young man to become a mighty warrior. That strength wasn't just for him. It was to deliver his people from oppression. In these two simple phrases, we find the essence of our spiritual journey. Help from the sanctuary and strength from Zion. One points to our vertical relationship with God and the other points to our horizontal relationship with his people. Both are essential for a balanced and resilient faith. So, for example, your spiritual encounter with our Daily Jesus devotional channel points to a horizontal relationship. Each day, by joining together in devotion and prayer, we harness the combined strength of our faith-filled Christian community. By doing this, our relationship with God and each other becomes even stronger. In the next verse, in Psalm 20, verse 3, the scripture tells us, May he remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice. Friends, the idea of offerings and sacrifices may seem outdated in today's world. Jesus already made the ultimate sacrifice on the cross, yet the principle remains profoundly significant. An offering symbolizes our willingness to give something of value to God. In the days of Noah, after the floodwaters receded, he built an altar and offered burnt offerings. The Bible says in Genesis 8 verse 21 that the Lord smelled a soothing aroma, not because God needed the offering, but because it symbolized Noah's grateful and obedient heart. So, what are your offerings today? They could be your talents, time, or resources. Colossians 3, verse 23, reminds us to do everything as unto the Lord. Whatever you offer to God, do it wholeheartedly. And then there's the burnt sacrifice, which represents total surrender. But do you know what's even better? Offering your obedience. As the scripture in 1 Samuel 15, verse 22, tells us, So Samuel said, has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed than the fat of rams. Obedience, my friends, is the true measure of our love and commitment to God. Interestingly, offerings are not just about giving, but it's also about God remembering and accepting our offerings. To remember signifies that God is taking note. The story of Cornelius in Acts 10 is a good example here. His offerings and prayers came up as a memorial before God and it prompted divine action. Listen to this. Acceptance of our sacrifices doesn't just mean God takes it, but it means that it pleases him. Just as Abel's offering was pleasing to God, in Genesis 4 verses 3 to 5. So can ours be. However, acceptance comes with sincerity and integrity. God doesn't just look at the gift, but he looks at the heart of the giver. Let's now move on to Psalm 20 verses 4 to 5, which reads, May he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your purpose. We will rejoice in your salvation. And in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. At first glance, 
This may seem like a blanket assurance or promise to get whatever we want, but there's much more depth to it than meets the eye. God is interested in the desires of our heart. Yes, but those desires are often shaped and refined through our relationship with Him. Psalm 37 verse 4 tells us to delight ourselves in the Lord and He will give us the desires of our heart. So the closer we are to God, the more our desires align with His will. The idea of fulfilling all your purpose speaks to the deep longing in each of us for significance. Let's look at the story of Deborah in the book of Judges, chapters 4. She was a prophetess and a judge, and God used her in delivering the Israelites from the Canaanites. Her purpose was more significant than her role. It was aligned with the redemption story of her people. Verse 5 of Psalm 20 says, we will rejoice in your salvation. So here the focus shifts from individual desires and purposes to a communal celebration of God's deliverance. The term salvation doesn't just refer to spiritual salvation, but also to deliverance from enemies, disease, or calamity. When God intervened for the Israelites against the Egyptians at the Red Sea, Miriam led the women in rejoicing and dancing. We see this happening in Exodus 15, verses 20 to 21. It says, Then Miriam, the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took the timbrel in her hand, and all the women went out after her with timbrels and with dances, and Miriam answered them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously the horse and its rider he has thrown into the sea. And let's not overlook the powerful declaration in verse 5, which says, In the name of our God we will set up our banners. A banner was used in biblical times to rally troops or to declare victory. It's a declaration of identity and ownership. When the Israelites looked upon the bronze serpent that Moses lifted up, they were healed, and we see this in the book of Numbers, chapter 21, verses 8 to 9. The banner signified God's power and mercy. My friends, our celebration is not just for our sake, but serves as a powerful testimony. Your breakthroughs, your victories, become a banner declaring God's faithfulness just like the walls of Jericho falling down served as a banner for God's people for generations to come. Now let's look at Psalm 20, verse 6, which reminds us that the Lord saves His anointed. It says, Now I know that the Lord saves His anointed. He will answer Him from His holy heaven with the saving strength of His right hand. This verse speaks to the assurance that comes from experiencing God's salvation. The term anointed often refers to someone chosen or set apart by God for a special task. Let's consider the story of Jehu in 2 Kings 9. He was anointed to be king over Israel and was tasked with wiping out the house of Ahab. It was a severe mission, but because he was anointed, he was fully equipped. In other words, he was too blessed to be stressed and too anointed to be disappointed. And so right now, I urge you to open your mouth wherever you are and make this powerful declaration of faith. Say this, I am too blessed to be stressed and too anointed to be disappointed. Doesn't that just make you feel better? Speaking these words not only uplifts our spirits, but also reminds us of the divine favor and grace upon our lives. When we vocalize our faith and the promises of God, we reinforce the truth of His love and power in our hearts. Friends, every time you declare such affirmations, you're building a fortress of faith against the doubts and fears that try to creep in. Let these declarations be your shield and strength in challenging times. Remember, the power of life and death 
is in the tongue. Choose life, choose faith, choose victory. Now, moving on. The verse continues with these words, from his holy heaven. This reminds us that God's intervention is from a divine perspective far above our earthly challenges. In the story of Balaam and his donkey, in the book of Numbers, chapter 22, we see how God's perspective is very different from ours. Balaam was angered by the donkey's behavior. Unaware that an angel of God was blocking the path, God's heavenly viewpoint is always broader and deeper than ours. His ways are higher than our ways. The saving strength of his right hand brings about a sense of might and intimacy. Right hands were often raised in oaths and covenants, symbolizing honor and commitment. Think about Peter walking on water in Matthew 14. He began to sink when he took his eyes off Jesus. But Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. That is the saving strength of God's right hand. The verse also echoes the famous account of David and Goliath. David was anointed, not as a warrior, but as a shepherd. Yet, it was the shepherd's skills, the ability to sling a stone, that brought down the giant. God used what David had, equipping him with saving strength. So, my friends, let's take heart in knowing that God equips those he calls. Your anointing is tailored for you, and it comes with the assurance of God's saving strength. I have personally come to understand that many times, the answers to our challenges are already among us. The keys to our breakthrough and deliverance are often close at hand. We are already equipped by God to break free. So when you are faced with trials or challenges, observe your surroundings. Look around. What blessings do you have? Is there something that you are overlooking? I urge you to take a moment for introspection and observation. Seek God's wisdom. Ask Him to highlight any actions that might not align with His will. He has given us resources, unique gifts, capabilities, and the discernment needed to navigate life's trials and challenges. He has equipped us for the purpose He has set before us. Therefore, in times of doubt, we must have faith and be patient. We must remember that we are not alone in our journey. God's guiding hand is always leading us towards His promises and blessings. Next, let us look at Psalm 20, verse 7, which speaks about trust in God over material things. It says, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. In the world we live in, it's easy to put trust in material things like stocks, homes, cars, jobs. These are the chariots and horses of today. These things aren't inherently bad, but the verse calls us to remember where our ultimate trust should lie. Think of the story of the rich young ruler in Mark 10, verses 17 to 22. He had great wealth, but he couldn't part with it to follow Jesus. His trust was misplaced. Remember, we should always put God first. Everything else comes after. The word remember is compelling. It implies that there will be times when we're prone to forget. Consider the story of the Israelites wandering in the wilderness. Despite having witnessed divine miracles, they quickly forgot and began to complain. Numbers 11 tells us they even yearned for the food they ate in Egypt, the land of their slavery. Look at what they said in Numbers 11 verses 5 to 6. We remember the fish we ate in Egypt at no cost, also the cucumbers, melons, leeks, onions, and garlic. But now we have lost our appetite. We never see anything but this manna. Can you imagine that? After all that God has brought them through. My friends, let us not forget the goodness of God and what he has done for us. 
Now let us also think about the words in this verse, which says, The name of the Lord our God. In biblical times, names carried much significance. The name of the Lord is not just a title, but it embodies His character. He is loving, just, merciful, and powerful. Therefore, to trust in His name is to trust in His nature. So, this verse highlights a common challenge, the conflict between the material and the spiritual. It urges us to evaluate where our real trust lies. Jesus tells us in Matthew 6 verse 21 that where our treasure is, there our hearts will be also. What are you treasuring today, my friends? Where is your treasure? Material things can offer temporary relief or satisfaction, but they can't offer the eternal rewards that comes with trusting God. Take the story of King Asa in 2 Chronicles 16 as an example. He sought help from the physicians for his disease, but failed to seek the Lord and eventually died. What's the lesson here? Our ultimate trust should be in God alone. Trust goes beyond mere acknowledgement. It requires action. The Israelites had to physically step into the Jordan River before it parted. We see this happening in Joshua 3 verses 14 to 17. They had to act upon their trust in God. So must we, my friends. And just for your edification, did you realize that the Israelites did not just experience the parting of the Red Sea? Yes, they also witnessed the parting of the Jordan River when they were about to enter the Promised Land. This miraculous event is a powerful reminder that God's power and faithfulness aren't just for one-time events, but for every season of our lives. It also emphasizes that God's miracles aren't solely reserved for our beginnings, but our present, even as we transition to new chapters of life. The story of the parting of the Jordan River can be found in the book of Joshua, specifically in Joshua chapters 3 and 4. My friends, there are victory and answers in the name of God. This is what Psalm 20 verses 8 to 9 is all about. The word says, they have bowed down and fallen. But we have risen and stand upright. Save, Lord. May the king answer us when we call. So the psalm ends with a contrasting imagery. The enemies have fallen, but God's people stand upright. This echoes the story of the walls of Jericho in Joshua 6. The enemies had a strong defense, but when the Israelites obeyed God's unusual strategy, the walls fell down flat. Then the call for salvation in this verse, which says, Save Lord, is not just a cry for help, but a declaration of where our help comes from. The New Testament counterpart to this might be the cry of the disciples when they were caught in the storm in Mark 4, verses 37 to 39. They cried out, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And Jesus responded by calming the storm. Listen to these words. May the King answer us when we call. God is King. He is sovereign over all situations. Think of the story of Jonah in the belly of the fish. In Jonah 2 verses 1 to 2, in his distress, he called upon the Lord and God answered him. It's a strong reminder that regardless of the depth of our despair, our cries can reach the ears of the king. Notice the plurality in these final verses. It's not just saying I, but it says we. It says when we call. So there's a communal aspect to our faith journey. Just as Moses, Aaron, and Hur stood together on the hill their collective faith and action led to Israel's victory over Amalek in Exodus 17 verses 10 to 13. My friends, our individual victories contribute to the collective triumph of the body of Christ. Your breakthrough, your answered prayer, becomes a testimony that can lift others in their moments of need. So, 
let's not underestimate the power of community in our walk with God. Let us not underestimate the power of sharing your testimonies with us in the comment section on our Daily Jesus devotional channel. Let's not underestimate the power of our faith-filled community as we encourage, uplift, and pray for each other. The closing verses captures the essence of the entire psalm. It's all about total reliance on God, acknowledging His sovereignty, and the assurance that He hears us when we call. My friends, as you go about your daily life, take these powerful truths to heart as you navigate life's challenges. May this anointed message of Psalm 20 bring you to a place where you can experience the blessed and victorious life that God promises and desires for us. Be blessed as you go about your day with these divine truths etched in your hearts. Be confident that the God of Jacob is your defender, that help comes from his sanctuary, and that the strength of his right hand will sustain you. Remember, the God of yesterday, today, and forever is with you. He has given you the strength and resilience to overcome. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and merciful God, Heavenly Father, Almighty God. You are magnificent in all your ways, glorious beyond measure, and faithful beyond understanding. Your love knows no bounds, and your grace is immeasurable. I come before you humbly with thanksgiving and praise. I thank you for the gift of life and for the many blessings and mercies that you have given to me and my loved ones. Lord, forgive me of my sins, both known and unknown, and I also forgive those who have trespassed against me. Cleanse me, O Lord, from all unrighteousness. Father God, I am grateful that you may answer me in the day of trouble, according to Psalm 20. O God of Jacob, you are my defense. You are my strength out of Zion and my present help in times of trouble. Lord, I commit this day to you, including every effort, every thought, and every interaction. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke every plan of the enemy to disturb the peace and blessings of this day. I bind every spirit of confusion, every force of evil, and claim victory over my life. In the name of Jesus. Eternal Father, bless the work of my hands, and may your face shine upon me, granting me your grace, favor, and abundant blessings. Enlarge my territory, O God, and enrich me in all wisdom and understanding. Lord, may you open my eyes to see the resources and opportunities that you have placed around me. May you reveal any actions or thoughts of mine that may be unwise. I claim healing in the name of Jesus over every cell every organ, every muscle, every joint, and every system in my body. Let your healing power flow through me, delivering me from all forms of illness, pain, or discomfort. I ask for divine protection over me and my loved ones. Father God, place a hedge of protection around us, guarding us from any harm or danger. You are our shield and buckler. You are our refuge and strength. As I lift up my loved ones to you, may they come to experience the fullness of your grace, love, and transformative power. Father, may you open their eyes to your truths and soften their hearts to accept your eternal love. May you heal their bodies, renew their minds, and restore their souls. 
Lord, help us to never forget your provisions, blessings, and guidance in our lives. Let me always stand upright in victory, and may I hear your voice clearly whenever I call on you. Lord, as I say this prayer, together with everyone listening, I am grateful for every heart that is opening to you right now. As we pray together, and for each other, we come in agreement to bind every spirit of fear, sickness, and lack. We declare that our help comes from you, the maker of heaven and earth. Bless us, protect us, and cause your face to shine upon us. Father, we stand in victory over all negative circumstances, and we thank you for making all the good difference in our lives. We are grateful for all that you have done for us and for all that you are about to do. Thank you for giving us testimonies of your love, mercies, healing, blessings, and peace. May we live in the knowledge and experience of your answered prayers and abundant blessings. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering my prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, Amen. If you were blessed by this message, type the word Amen in the comments section below. I declare that all the blessings of this prayer are now upon you, in the name of Jesus. You can help us to reach more persons and spread the gospel. You can do this by sharing the video with a friend or family member who you know needs the blessing of this prayer and by clicking the like button. Also remember to subscribe to our daily Jesus devotional channel for more videos that will bless your heart and uplift your spirit. We appreciate all those who support us. You're blessed to be a blessing. Now, for those who are listening and you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I urge you to receive God's grace with an open and repentant heart. Start where you are. Your past doesn't matter. Jesus came to seek and to save those that are lost. God loves you. It is not God's will that anyone should perish, but for all to come to repentance. Say this simple salvation prayer for yourself. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, hear my prayer, I pray. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Now that you have prayed this prayer, you can ask a pastor to baptize you at a local church and make that decision public. Baptism is a symbol of that decision to follow Jesus. I then encourage you to have fellowship with other believers, to learn more about your new life and to get to know more about God. Please feel free to leave your prayer request in the comment section so that we can present them before God for your blessings and victory. Also, we invite other believers on the YouTube platform and all over the world to join us and start praying for you right now. And we want you to know that even if you don't see a reply to your prayer request, it doesn't mean that you were not prayed for. Rest assured that we are actively lifting up each request to God that is in accordance with His will. We believe in the power of prayer to bring comfort, healing, and guidance in accordance with God's perfect plan. To God be all the glory. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all.